Good morning. I feel like I'm way too far away from folks. I'm just going to move this over just because. There. See? Better. Good morning. Hey, everybody. Happy, happy pride. For those who understand what I mean. Yay. Yay. And I'm Reverend Edith Washington Woods, Senior Minister here at Unity of Gaithersburg. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so happy for this day. And it's not raining, and I'm even happier. And if it rains, that's cool, too. But it's not. Because I wash my car. Right. And welcome out there, all of you out there in love streaming land, especially the lady on Facebook from Texas. Hello. How you doing? So glad you're here. Hope you enjoy our service today. So, and Reverend, yes, and I'm Reverend Kelly Isola is online too. We'll be doing a little something, something this afternoon. Well, it's not afternoon yet, but we'll be doing something for you. So welcome Reverend Kelly Isola to our ministry today. All right, now I know you're ready. Let's open, open with prayer. Let us pray. Divine love, God of our understanding, we're so grateful for this day, this first Sunday in June of 2023. What a wonderful crispness to this. And we take a moment to open Open our hearts, open our minds, open the possibilities using our imagination faculty to know the truth of who we are. That we are individualized expressions of God, the children of God, the embodiment of God. And for this, we are so grateful. May each of us gain something we didn't know to take with us into our week as we fellowship today, on this day. And for this, we are so very grateful. And so it is. Amen. And now on the screen, we have our mission statement. And... It's on your screen, so let's read it together. Together, please. We are a heart-centered, evolving, and expansive spiritual community dedicated to expressing our divinity, empowering personal transformation, and honoring all through spiritual practice, education, and service. And for those of you who are here in the sanctuary, I'm sure you saw our wonderful banner out there, our new banner. Did you like that? Oh my goodness, isn't it beautiful? And all of our core values are in there. Find them. <laughs> yes. And now we have um, our congregational song. Oh, yeah, I want to do that. Yes, thank you very much. So I want to welcome all who are new with us today or who haven't been here in a long time. So if you're brand new, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Hello, how you doing? So glad you're here. Thank you very much. Anybody who hasn't been here in a while? Hello, how you doing? So glad you're here. Giving you a love hug just like this and a little heart just so you know love is in the air. Okay. Yeah, it is. And now we have our congregational song, The Light of God. Let's do it. And if you want to dance, it's fine, isn't it? That's what we do. Hello. Here we are. Good morning, everybody. All right. Well, we are going to continue with this. Do you just feel the energy in the room? Is it like... Well, let's raise the vibration... Oh. We're going to raise the vibration a little more. We invite you to stand, to chair dance, to, I don't know, do the kick line. That seems to be real popular here with our community song called Light of God. And sing along, too. Can't forget that part. Ready? I am 
the light of God. I am the love of God. I am the power of God. I am the presence of God. Wherever I am, God is. You guys that again. I am the light of God. I am the love of God. I am the power of God. I am the presence of God. to me. <laughs> got my, got my get you on, got my whole dancing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Welcome. Hi, I'm Pamela Mills, uh, board of trustees, a chicken farmer, really cool person. And here to just let you know all the amazing things that Unity of Gaithersburg has to offer. And honoring graduates. So, oh, that's right. she has we, one. this is June, right? There's some people who have already graduated, some who haven't done it yet, and some who are celebrating that they already did it, yeah? So we wanna celebrate anybody who has graduated, whether it's eighth grade, 12th grade, college, you know, master's degrees. <laughs> if you have that or are gonna have it, please stand so we can celebrate you. Oh, and it could be graduating to kindergarten too, right? <laughs> so we just want to bless you. We want to do our unity blessing. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ as you. Let's say it together. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ as you. Happy graduation. Yay! Did it, did it, did it. Woo, woo, woo. All right. Yes, make sure to use that time that you now have available to you wisely. <laughs> I, I've been there. <laughs> I, I know what it's like. I was working full time and going to school full time, and it's just like, what do I do with myself now? I see. <laughs> I think I'm going to go for this thing called a walk. Wow. 
It's exciting, very exciting. Okay, so, uh, or maybe you want to attend another class. <laughs> sea Week uh, is June 4th through 9th, and we have amazing classes that will be here at Unity of Gaithersburg, both online and in person. So please do see the newsletter or the website to register. You can take a picture of that little QR code, and it'll give you all the amazing info. Pride! Yes! Let's give, let's give some recognition, please, to the awareness of the unified love force that we are. Yes? Love is love. We are love. Love all, serve all, all good. And we will be actually at the Capital Pride Festival. So join, we're, and we're looking for volunteers. So join me, I'll be at the table. I know a few of you already signed up, but we're always looking for more people to come and represent Unity of Gaithersburg. Uh, all the inclusiveness, the, uh, was it the uh, unapologetic inclusivity <laughs> that we are and should always be. Okay, because um, those that are uh, perceived to be held out of the light of God, we are holding the hand of the person that we are attempting to hold out, right? So let us remember that we are all included and that we welcome everyone into the light of God because that's who they are anyway, like, hello. And pick a party, pick a party, pick a party. Where is Elizabeth? Hello, hello, everybody. Are we prosperous? I am prosperous. Three times. Ready? I am prosperous. I am prosperous. I am prosperous. And at Uni of Gaithersburg, we are so prosperous. And we are kicking off our fundraiser called Pick Up Parties. And we extend it. We have 10 parties so far registered. We're extending the registration for another week because I've had at least five other people tell me about parties that they want to host. Um, they haven't signed up yet, and I want to make sure everyone gets their dates. I have anyone want, um, actually, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I have QR codes here for those still wanting to register for a party. I can pass it out at the end. Um, I want to announce one party in particular. Brad wants to do his dinner parties again. Who attended a Brad dinner party? Did. You did? Yeah? He's like an awesome cook, right? So he wants to do at least two or three, and, but this year he would like a sous chef to help him um, because it's a lot of work. And the sous chef won't have to pay the same rate. It could be maybe a love offering or we'll, we'll figure out something. But if you're interested in spending time with Brad to help prepare the meals, you know, everyone knows Brad. He's a lot of fun. So you'll, you'll help him prepare, set up, and you get to spend time with Brad. We're looking for some sous chefs who would like to that opportunity. And then I want to promote, so because we're not going live yet with pickup parties, we do have one coming up at the summer solstice on June 23rd. I passed out some of these to the lovely ladies here today. So full moon, summer solstice. Sorry, guys, this is for women only. Uh, the QR or those who identify as women, thank you. Um, QR codes here. Um, if you haven't gotten one yet, raise your hand, and I'll pass it out when I head back to my seat. OK, I'll come pass it out. OK, great. Um, and oh, oh, there we go, my Vanna White. Anyone else want one that didn't get it? John, you can have one, but we can talk later. So I can explain. Um, all right, so we're really excited. We have some great parties planned. And um, please, those of you at home who want to either participate and join a party or who want to register to throw a party, please sign up. And that is it. OK. And yes, Moon Circle, gathering of women, those identify as women. Join us. And the Caring Cottage is having a new drive for veterans. Are there any veterans here today? Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. We honor you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we have canned food for you. <laughs> but, yes, so if you would like to donate to Veterans in Need or uh, the donation box is in the lobby, so please feel free to drop off your food. 
And knowing that our foundation is prayer, our prayer chaplain today is Errol. So Errol, if you want to raise your hand. So after service, if you would like to pray with Errol, he will uh, bring the light of love into you together. And now Tavion will be doing our daily word. Hello. So here is our daily word for Sunday, June 4th, 2023. The word for today is release. And we affirm regular releasing keeps me in the flow of life. I've been changing as long as I've been alive and will continue to evolve as long as I live. I make room for the person I'm becoming through releasing, which is, imp and which is an important part of my spiritual practice. Just as I will not fill my closet with clothes that no longer fit, I do not fill my life with beliefs and ideas that no longer reflect who I am and who I'm becoming. Regular releasing creates space in my life for new things to come in. It is my way of, it is my way of remaining open to possibility of welcoming new opportunities of keeping myself in the flow of life. Releasing is also a powerful way to live my faith. I trust I am moving in the right direction and release items from my past easily and with gratitude for the role they played in my life. From the book of Psalm, chapter 51, verse 10, it states, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Now, let's take a moment to reflect on the word for today, release. Thank you. Okay, so it is Family Sunday, which is why our YOU, Tavion McMullen, who is also our Regi, yay, Regi is a representative of the youth in the Eastern region, yay. So, so I have a book, so any of you who are young or young at heart, you can come sit down here on these steps, and can somebody bring me a chair? Can you bring me a chair, please, Shoshana, from right there? Yes. It's down, 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 down. So while they're coming, I'm going to introduce the book. It's on the screen. It, the name of the book is A Church for All. And I'll tell you sometime this month the story about how I located the author it took a lot, but I found her so I could get permission to read this book to you guys. So it's called A Church for All, and it is by Gail E. Pittman, who had, happens to be a PhD. And the illustrator is Lori Fournier. Fournier, I think is how you say it. So here we go. A Church for All, and there's a rainbow flag, and... Here we go. This is Sunday waking. So they woke up Sunday morning. It happens to be a family with two dads and a couple of children. Day is breaking. So it's, you know, like it was when we got up this morning. Yeah, it was breaking just, well, some of you slept in. So you didn't see the day when it was becoming light. But it's showing it in, in this page. Isn't that cute? Let's go to our to uh, let's go to our church for all. So there's all kinds of families and people who are not families, but maybe single people or married people or not married people or people who've been together for 45 years and not got married, but that's okay. The church bells are ringing. Oh, there are people going on bikes and 
and, and all various uh, cultures and expressions, a lot of diversity and inclusion. And the choir is singing. They have robes on, and oh my goodness, there's a black lady with locks and a white lady, and wow, it looks like an Asian person. Yes, definitely, and, and a, a rainbow flag. And there are laughing voices, and they're laughing and they're dancing. I wonder what does that represent any place here? Hmm. Candles are glowing and banners are flowing. Candles are glowing and burning and banners are flowing outside. Oh my gosh. Come enter our church for all. There's a lady with a baby and a little kid with, oh my gosh, she's got on star stockings. They have different colors in them and a pink dress and pink shoes. Awesome. The weak and the healthy, the neat and the messy. There's someone with a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. There's somebody that looks like a bodybuilder. Okay, that'll work. Yeah, that's because you bodybuilders in here. I know who you are. Poor and help, poor and wealthy, plain and dressy. So see, some people are coming all dressed up and got the church hat on. There's a church lady. Uh-oh. And somebody with a rainbow mohawk. And then, there, oh, there's a geisha, a lady that's dressed like a geisha. So all are welcome at this church. All embracing, spirit gracing, each one at our church for all. It says love, peace, joy. What's that say? Come as you are. It says come as you are. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Come as you are. Yeah. It says come as you are right here. Yeah. And all are welcome. And people have their hands all raised up, raise it up. Bodies wiggling, mommies reading, children giggling, daddies pleading. I wonder what are they pleading for? Whoa. Toddlers flailing, babies wailing. Yeah, crying babies are okay at the church for all. There's room at our church for all. Oh my goodness, isn't that nice? Hands receiving, hands connecting, so people are hugging, some are holding hands, isn't that wonderful? Hearts believing, hearts accepting, feel the spirit, can you hear it? Can you hear the spirit? It's here at our church for all. And that's the end. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. Sometimes it's too loud. Sometimes it's too loud. Yeah, I get it. So um, you can take my book if you really want to. Bye. <laughs> so she's taking a book. Okay. So there we go. And now we have another song for you while the children are going over to Children's Church. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try
imagine there's no countries It isn't hard to do Nothing to kill or die for And no religion too Imagine all the people No possessions I wonder if you can No need for greed or hunger A brotherhood of men and women <laughs> Imagine all the people Sharing all the world You may say I'm a dreamer Of imagination. And I'm going to welcome to the screen, you'll be seeing in a moment, Reverend Kelly Isola. She'll be bring, there, we'll be bringing her up on the screen too. And I'll stand over here. So, hey, Kelly. And so, we're talking about the power of imagination, like what's possible. Yes? And, and imagination is our power of the month this month, June. And the color is? Purple. That's not purple, that's light blue. Purple was last month. Now we have blue, and some people have a little blue in their hair. Hmm. So, so blue is the color, light blue, but any blue will, will help. And imagination is the power, and the disciple is Bartholomew. And so we're talking about possibility a possibility of living into who we really are, really. Like, I didn't know who I was when I came to Unity. I was kind of trying to find out. And sometimes people are doing that, and some people want to be accepted. And here we are in, in this month of June, where it's Pride Month, the whole month. And so I get to be my full self here at this church, and I'm so happy and grateful to do that, right? <laughs> As a same gender loving woman, it wasn't so nice to be that way, you know, 40 some odd years ago when I was attempting to be my full self, right? And now I'm able to do that. <clears throat> and I get it, I don't look like I'm gay, but hey, let me tell you, I am. You know, I just happen to be, right? And there's so many people who are affirming to who we are, period. Like there's no, no exception to us shining our light. And so Kelly and I, we're going to be taking questions from you guys. If you want to know anything about unity or just some question off the top of your head that you really want to know. And, and then we're going to talk about some things too. So bringing Kelly back on, please let her on. Hey, Kelly, that's Kelly. And tomorrow will be our 14th year since ordination? Yes. No, no, today. T today? Is it? June 4th. I, was, I was thinking it was the 4th, and then I looked on Mark Fuss's email, and it said the 5th, so I didn't know what the nope. hell it was. See, nope. I was thinking today was today. the damn day. We got ordained in 2009, Miss Kelly and I, and uh, <laughs> we're still here. I know. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? They'll ordain anybody. No. Yeah. 
and you got the hoods and all that to prove it. So oh, masters, yeah, yeah, masters of divinity. Yeah, mm-hmm. does that mean we're holy or anything like that, Kel? Oh no, 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 no. no, no. We may have holes. Absolutely. You know, like holes in our socks and. I'm holy. Oh, I am so holy. In so many ways. In so many ways. But I told my son who, Aaron is getting ready to go into school for PhD. And, and I told mm-hmm. him, when you leave Minnesota, please don't take the holy clothes. Because <laughs> he hangs on the things, you know. You know, the whole. Yeah. Did you get it? The whole clo- socks with holes in them. Mama's not there to darn them. They're also holy, H-O-L-Y. Yes. And what is, what is that? What is holy H-O-L-Y? What does that mean? Are you asking me? I am. You okay. can't see well, me looking at you, you, but I'm looking so, at you. But, and yeah, she well, can't see me. Yeah, well, isn't split anymore. I can't see you. So, oh, okay. Um, and maybe they could do that. Uh, so, well, holy H-O-L-Y. So the word whole, W-H-O-L-E, holy H-O-L-Y, you know, holy like W-H-O-L-L-Y, like what we wholly mean, um, wholeness, um, even health, they all come from the same root. They all have the same root. And so they all start in a place of, um, you know, sacred. Uh, and sacred is doesn't necessarily have anything to do with faith or religion or, or even spirituality. Uh, sacred, again, so being a word nerd, um, I'm always going to go to the etymology of the word. And, um, you know, sacred is, is just what, um, you know, it's, you almost get into a word loop, you know, sacred is holy and holy is sacred. And, but sacred is, is really more of a, um, kind of what, what's dear to your heart and also what's dear and what, uh, is informed by, you know, ultimate reality, however you define ultimate reality, um, and so, and the root of sacred and sacrifice have the same, or come from the same place. So it's, you know, and we have a tendency in our culture to think of sacrifice as this horrible thing, you know, like, oh, I got to sacrifice something when actually it's, if you go back to the beginnings of it, it's not, it's not that something to, you know, like that, that is this horrible, bad, you know, well, not bad, but this really horrible um, thing like like I'm losing something um, when in reality it can mean that and uh, sometimes it's the best thing that could happen is to lose something you know some fires we let burn fire is sacred so anyway you got me off on a um, a nice uh, squirrel moment yes holy whole right and holy hole yep. holy 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 yeah yes. oh there you are yay hi yeah, so, you know, people wonder, how can they be holy and sacred, and what do you have to do? Do you got to get on a pedestal? Do you need to let go of, like, all of your bad habits or anything like that that got you to where you're going? But sometimes we have to understand that those things that have happened to us are actually the thing that moves us forward. That when we thought that we were being bad or, you know, maybe we were being judged or something like that, that really we're not. That is nothing that we've ever done in our lives that has us um, maybe uh, uh, like we're going to go to a place called hell, right? So Kelly, let's talk about hell for a minute. (laughs) What is hell? Yeah, H-E double hockey sticks. Hey, oh. double hockey sticks. That yeah. one. Uh, uh, well, uh, most of us um, have been there. I've been uh, there for sure. I've been there. Crawled yeah. around if you're, if in the fire. Stepper, you know, yeah. me and Kelly both twelve steppers. She got a whole lot more years than I do. Just saying, she does. Like damn more. near forty, isn't it? Uh, no, March was thirty-four. Yeah, thirty-four. Is that what you said? 34, yeah. Okay, and I had 29 last Sunday. See, so she's older than me, even though she's younger than me. Yeah, whatever. (laughs) Some people get sober when they're like 12. (laughs) <laughs> but she she wasn't twelve. Though. Well, some 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 of us lived hell really early, really yes. strong, really hard on. Yes. So 
you know. Um, so hell is you don't we don't often hear the word immunity, and when we do hear it, it's often you know in the context of say a metaphysics class, and and it's a state of consciousness. Yes. Um, and it's a word that I I don't I don't know that I use it a lot, um, but it's it's. It, it also goes hand in hand with heaven, which is also a, and heaven really is, uh, okay, now I'm going down another squirrel path. Um, you know, we take that kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God term from uh, the teachings of Jesus. And uh, in the teachings of Jesus, the way it's written, you know, the gospel writers wrote it, is Jesus uses the terms synonymously. They, they um uh, they mean the same thing. And in metaphysics and unity, uh, it, there are two different things, but I, I won't go down that road. You'll have to come to class. Um, and uh, the self-care class, well, both classes. The, so hell is really this state of consciousness, and it's, all, it's something that's always unfolding. It's not really a destination like heaven. So what I mean by it's always unfolding is that, um, you know, the... Uh, I'm not solely responsible for the world that's around me, right? There's, I individually uh, contribute, but there's, you know, billions of others contributing to this world that I'm in. What I do, what is mine to really pay attention to is how I respond. And so I can, so it's my state of, you know, consciousness, my stage of spiritual development that I, re, you know, how I respond. And so, um, and that's so it's always emerging because I'm always responding to something and what I believe my thoughts and feelings are made manifest. And so I wreak more havoc you know, kind of around me or, um, you know, there's a little bit more meaningfulness going on in there. There's a little bit less suffering, a little more joy. You know, there's heaven. It's always unfolding. It's heaven and hell are verbs. They're not nouns. But we teach them and think about them as nouns, as somewhere to get to. Um, and for me, it's I understand that. And it's time that we kind of ramp that up because mm -hmm. there is no in consciousness. There is no destination right. because we're always evolving. Mm -hmm. And how I be in the world is directly informed by my thoughts and feelings. Yes. Right. And for the most part, my feelings inform my thoughts, not the other way around, which is what most of us have been told over the years. But science has been showing us it's actually the feelings create the thoughts more often than not. So I think of hell as, um, you know, my when I'm when what I'm demonstrating, when, when what's coming from me is from a place of suffering, a place that is um you know, not my, not my most noble self. How's that? Yes. And, and not uplifting me or easing the suffering of another. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I want to also mention that I know it may be some of you who say, but wait a minute, hell's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Right. And, 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 and if you are like I was, when I grew up, hell was like underneath the earth, the dirt, and it was down there and it was fire and you go down there. Right. Like heaven, you go up there. And so two things I want you to know is when the Bible was written, they didn't even know the earth was round. They thought it was flat. Yeah, uh-huh. And in and, and the whole Tower of Bible, when they wanted to climb up the, the ladder, they wanted to get to God up there above the clouds. But he hell in the Bible was a location in Gehenna where they burned the garbage. Okay, so there you go. So if you really want to go to hell, you have to go to he Gehenna and see if they still burn the garbage there, which they probably don't, yeah? And now you know what you know. So, so I want to go to the classes. So I'm going to be teaching a class called Prosperity, and Reverend Kelly's going to be teaching two classes, well, really four, but let's talk about the two. One is um, the history of new thought and unity, and the other one is self-care. So Kelly, could you talk to them a little bit about why would someone want to take your class, especially if they're new or if they've been around unity for 25 or 30 years? Well, first of all, it's me. Hello. Hello. And you're going to have so much fun with her. <laughs> uh, I couldn't resist. Kind of opened that door. Um, <laughs> So I'll start with the self-care. Uh, I know that people see that it's a, it's a, 
constant conversation in spiritual communities, not just in unity about self-care, 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 and especially coming through a pandemic and, you know, this, this over, um, just seeing loneliness and depression and suffering and struggling, you know, emotionally and relationships, you know, so widespread, especially with youth, you know, all the mental health challenges we have. And we, you know, we very often, you know, move into a conversation about self-care and there's nothing inherently wrong with self-care. The challenge and, and how I teach self-care now, um, you know, it's always the content of a class should always be evolving, always because we are and because our culture is. And so the self-care class is if you've taken it before, this is nothing like what you've taken before. And the reason it's nothing like it is because our self-care industry, our wellness industry um, is is informed by the culture we have in the U.S. of scarcity, supremacy and separation. Um, and so there is this whole business of, of wellness, which is an industry, the byproduct and what we're looking for ourselves is well-being. Um, also, another root of holy is wellness um, and well-being. Um, and so within the context of the self-care class, while there is absolutely there's, you know, how I'm caring for me, it's necessary for my survival and me thriving. But if there's not a co collective community care, collective well-being component, you, you might as well just stay home. Because I'm not, uh, we're not separate. I know we are separate, right? Like here, I look at you, we're separate. And I enjoy that. And I enjoy that sense of being separate, so to speak, because you are different than I am. And I want to know what's different about us. And I want to celebrate that. And I want to, you know, butt heads with you on some things. And I want to, you know, laugh and cry, you know, with you as well, with other things. And in consciousness, we are one. Uh, so in consciousness, um, also knowing that, and yet outside of me, while I'm there's this individual self-care, at the same time is this collective well-being, this collective care. So if we don't include what that looks like, then it's not then then it's it's conditional, it's rugged individualism, which is how we've gotten to where we are in our culture. So I only have 10 hours of <laughs> self-care class, but I'm coming at it from a very different angle. The the myth of wellness in the U.S. is what we think wellness is, is really a myth. And it's built on systems of oppression. And and people push back some and they're like, no, it's not. It's about caring for. Yes. And there's all the elements of I got to do it right. Like, uh, you know, do it perfectly and I have to do it to ease so everybody can be comfortable and and everybody is, you know, at peace um, there's just a lot of unconscious, unexamined assumptions about self-care that I want to, you know, tease apart and, and see where in our self-care practices, we might be, you know, contributing to separation and scarcity. Okay. So that's the self-care class. If you want to register, do that today. There are some um, flyers outside if you'd like to do that. And then I th the, the history of, of U New Thought and Unity is, I mean, come on now. Do I need to say more? History of New Thought and Unity. You're going to get a bunch of the history about our spiritual community. So if, especially if you're new. But look, if, you, if you've been around a long time, you're going to find some things out that you didn't know. So I would encourage you to do that. And then lastly, my class on prosperity, you know, people think, oh, she's going to do prosperity. She's going to ask us for money. Mm -mm. It's, not, it's not a tithing class. It is on prosperity where I'll be talking about, we'll be looking at the word prosperity, but also abundance. Like, what does abundance mean? If I ask you to think about abundance, what does that mean for you? Does it bring up you know, some tension perhaps, like, oh, I'm not abundant, I don't have abundant. Well, hmm, if you have stuff in your place where you live, then you have abundance. If you have a whole lot of stuff that some people might call clutter, you have an overwhelming amount of abundance. 
So we're going to be talking about that, reading about it, having some fun in the class. So if you're interested, sign up. It's going to be online, but it's also going to be in person. So if anybody wants to come in person from 10 to noon, Monday through Thursday, it'll be on. Well, yeah, you can come Friday, too, but I won't be here in person. I'll be in North Carolina. But, um, <laughs> uh, but everyone who wants to come on Monday through Friday from 10 to noon, you could come. And uh, yeah, so register. And with that, I want to give thanks to Reverend Kelly Isola for coming to... Uh, help me out today with the lesson and we've run out of time so I can't take your questions but if you have questions write them down or text me or send me some kind of way find me and we'll make sure I'll make sure I address it at another time all right okay so thanks Kelly bye bye Bye. so now is our time for a meditative portion in this service. I want to invite you to join me in closing your eyes. And if you would rather keep them open, I invite you to have your eyes at like a half, half closed, like a soft gaze. And focus on one spot in the room. For there is no spot where God is not. We take a moment to become really, really still. And in the stillness, we notice our breath. And how our breath goes in and out of our body. And perhaps you may even want to take a gentle breath, a conscious breath. <sighs> Understanding that as we take these conscious breaths, that we are aligning with the consciousness, with the oneness of God the good omniscience that is flowing through us now. And we take in the power of imagination. Imagining for a moment someone we love and appreciate bringing that two-legged or four-legged some person, animal, to our mind, could be a bird. And bring it to our mind now. And to know that the love that we are mm, feeling and, and thinking and using our imagination to come up with that, that something. that there is this love that is flowing down into our, our heart space. And that it is moving from our heart space to every cell of our body. And that it is nothing we can do, we just get to be it. That it radiates out into our body, hmm, giving that love oxygenation to every cell, every organ, every artery, every vein, and that we live into it, into me I see. And as we go into a time of silence, may we know for ourselves all that is possible using our imagination. May we know what is possible in this moment as we go into a time of silence. We say, I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful 
to use my imagination. In the silence, we go deeper together. grateful. I am grateful to use my imagination. And in this expanded state of consciousness, we bring to our hearts and minds anyone who may need to know their greatness. Those who may be marginalized those who may mm, want some acceptance, that we bring to our minds those people. Anyone may have a, a health situation going on, anything at all. And we can bring their names to our mind or to our lips and say their names out loud. I'm bringing my mother, Arla in this space. Any more names? Yes. Yes. We hold these names, those spoken and those that are whispered in our mind, having this collective consciousness of lifting them up, of knowing for them all that is possible. And as we gently bring ourselves back to the space and time, we declare our affirmation for today. I'll say it once as you're coming back, and then as you open your eyes, we'll say it together. I am using my imagination to be transformed in mind, body, and spirit. Together? I am using my imagination to be transformed in mind, body, and spirit. Put your hands on your heart. I invite you to do that. And just breathe into this moment, into this space. Breathing in and gently breathing out. One more time, breathing in together, breathing in, and gently breathing out. And we say our affirmation today again, for our heart depends on it, for we are the heartbeat of the world. Together, I am using my imagination to be transformed in mind, body, and spirit. And so it is. And so we let it be us. Amen. And namaste.
dream it, believe it, do it. You got to think it, dream it, believe it, do it. Think it, dream it, believe it, do it. I'm taking all those blocks away. Dream it, believe it, do it, think it, dream it, believe it, you can do it, think it, dream it. Dream it, believe it, you can do it, think it, dream it, believe it, do it, think it, dream it, believe it, do it, think it, dream it, believe it, I can do it, think it, dream it, believe it, I can do it. It, dream it, believe it, I can do it, we can do it. Where you gon' think it and dream it, believe it, we can do it, think it and dream it, believe it, we can do it, think it and dream it, believe it, we can do it, we can do it. All right, now is the time for an opportunity to share with us your prosperity. Now, don't get me wrong, prosperity is not about the collection of little bits of paper and little metal discs, correct? Although as a society, we have deemed the use of those tools to be helpful. So our collection of your little bits of paper and little metal discs have been sought for our prosperity so that we can continue to give to the world as a representative of the abundance that which we are, the endlessness that which we are. Because we know that without that awareness of abundance and endlessness, those little bits of paper and those little metal discs are useless. Because we know plenty of people that have lots of little bits of paper and little metal discs who are miserable, right? Scrooge McDuck, anybody? Anybody remember Scrooge McDuck? I'm a, sorry, Disney. <laughs> but anyway, it is about recognizing the abundance within you that whether you have little bits of paper and little metal discs to share what you are sharing is a tool of awareness of prosperity and abundance and endlessness 
and I am sharing that awareness of endlessness with every person in the world and helping recognize the endlessness, the abundance within them. Can I have an amen? amen. All right. So give, give us your money. And uh, text to give and repeat with me. Divine love, I am, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am so grateful. And now we welcome our children. Let me tell you how much I love that when we come in. <laughs> yep. So I can say, though, that the Charlie Brown cartoons were my second favorite, but my absolute favorite cartoon is How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and it has to be the cartoon version, yes. not that thing with Jim Carrey. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, anyhow, what I want to say is today, um, we've got a couple of extra YOUers who are kind of hiding in the corner, um, but we picked them up on the way back over. So, um, come and sit down here. Come on, sit, sit. Yeah, we got a guy here who's really into turtles. So, this is what I think. I think, I'm probably stepping on things, but he should have one at home that's not an inanimate one. I'm just saying. So, um, earlier today, um, somebody talked about the t-shirts that say unapologetically inclusive from Unity, so Tavion has one on. So just do a kind of show and tell there, Tavion. Yeah, okay. Did you all notice how deep his voice has gotten since last week? As the persons who live with him, I'm kind of scared. Um, <clears throat> so, yes. So, what was, who had today's power? You did. What is it? Imagination. Yes. And who had, where is it? No running inside. Well, yeah. That's, that's one of our heart agreements. Okay, yes. In the top middle of the eyes. Yes, in the middle of the eyes. And Jaden, what's the color this month? What's the color? Blue. Blue, yes. And. Okay, sky blue, yes. And so, um, so we learned about, you know, this, this week's power. But I wanted to bring your attention to their packet, which is quite full. Those of you get it. And those of you want one, uh, talk to me. I'll give you one. But there's all kinds of things in there this week to talk about imagination. Um, and the Bible story was the lost sheep. Um, so with that, and the last thing I want to say is we have quite a summer planned here. So I would encourage you, if you know any people 18 and younger who want to show up, we got water games and bounce houses and tie-dye and all kinds of things. So we've got quite the summer planned here. Um, we have Peace Camp, which is going to be a day camp um, for the last week of August. And um, what did we talk about this book? What did we say um, Reverend Edith became? To Detective. Right. We talked about Reverend Edith being a detective to track down the woman who wrote this book because I became aware of the book like Monday or Tuesday. We got it overnighted to us, and then she had to track the author down, and we talked about her detective powers to find the person who did this book. 
Okay, with that being said, we are going to do our blessings for our youth. Okay, uh, what, I'm sorry? Yes, blessings for our youth and ourselves. Okay. I am the light of the world. I live as the light. You are the light of the world. You live as the light. Together. Together. We are the light of the world. We live as the light. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Thank you. the truth of who you are as an individualized expression. So go express yourself in the world. Have a wonderful week, everybody.